If someone says to me, let's go to the mall, normally I cringe. Not something I want to do. But when it's a mall with over a thousand muscle cars, sports cars, classic cars in it, well, yeah, let's go. Of course, we're going to take the SVO. I have to, you know, test my rear defroster, things like that. It's about 70 miles away, so that's about 140 miles round trip. So that should be a good test to what I've done to this car. I think it's running pretty well. This is a mall that's in central Pennsylvania. Of course, like a lot of malls around America, all the stores left. The anchor stores closed. I believe the anchor store here was Sears. And they went out of business, like all the Sears, all across the country. But someone got the idea of, you know, what if I could have an indoor showroom put together a bunch of collector cars? All these cars are on consignment, so they're not dealer-owned cars. It's They're owned by, you know, owners, people like you and me that just don't want to go through the hassles of Facebook Marketplace and the whores of the spam answering and things like that 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 entails. So they take them here. And then these folks have a sales department that sells them. I can hear the turbo this morning. The air's a little cooler. And that car kind of wakes up when that happens. This is the first real decent sized trip since the timing belt and the water pump and everything else. So I could easily end up alongside a road, but eh, there's only one way to find out if things are going well for you, and that's to test them. So let's start off by getting the SVO drama out of the way. That car is pretty well sorted. Other than the parking brake that doesn't work right now, and that's a rear caliper issue, which I'm going to get to, and the AC, there really wasn't any drama. It went all the way down and all the way back. Upon entering the classic auto mall, the amount of space this place occupies doesn't hit you right away. Sure, there are cars on the left, right, and center, but like many malls in America, this place branches out in many different directions. Each former store is filled with vehicles, and while there are a handful of cars there that are for display purposes, the majority of these cars are for sale. I said earlier, if you happen to stumble across your dream car, there are salespeople there to help you. But in retrospect, these folks act more like liaisons between the buyers and sellers. They are called automotive specialists, and they are there to help answer questions and tender offers to the vehicle's owners. Sure, the business takes a percentage, they have to keep the lights on, but they do not set the asking price. That's determined by the seller, and the seller ultimately accepts or rejects an offer. This allows the sellers to get the price they're looking for and for people to offer any price that they believe is correct for the vehicle in the current marketplace. Could a seller accept a low offer? Sure. They could also reject it or make a counter offer. I've always said that a fair price often leaves both sides feeling they could have done a little better. I'm going to show you just a few of the vehicles that were on display the day I happened to stop by. That day there was 947 cars and trucks for sale, and I won't get to all of them because this video would be really, really long. Now keep in mind this place finds homes for quite a few vehicles over the course of a week or two. My visit was a couple of weeks ago, but I'm sure a few of these vehicles are just no longer for sale. That said, new vehicles are being added to the mall floor every day, so if you don't see what you're looking for here, maybe take a look at their website or stop by. Here's a few of the Fords that happened to catch my eye that day. We'll start with the 1969 Mercury Cougar Convertible. Had its original 351 Windsor, backed by an automatic transmission. This car presented well, and the top and interior looked great. There was this 1987 Turbo Coupe with an all-original driveline, and the original paint shows well, as does the interior. Yes, it still has the original tape deck with the error-correct really large equalizer in the dash. This 1968 Ford Ranchero was equipped with a 351 Windsor and a three-speed automatic. It also had a tonneau cover on it. This thing looked great from pretty much every angle. This 1969 Ranchero with a 351 Cleveland Auto, it was sporting the chrome side pipes and had only 16,000 original miles. There was this stunning 1971 Mach 1 in white. I can say this car found a new home as it's no longer there. There was a 1968 289 three-speed automatic Mustang Coupe. It was wearing its original pebble beige paint, which you rarely see. 
This 1973 Cougar XR7 convertible was equipped with a 351 Cobra Jet V8 four-speed. This was one option out big cat that looked really, really nice in person. We move on to a 1993 Ford Mustang SVT Cobra in teal. It came with its SVT certificate and a really nice looking interior. We're going to go out in style on this little tour with CSX 2133. This is a real Shelby AC Cobra. The car's history is well documented from the day it left the factory to the current day. Any work done to this car has been recorded, and it's priced just under $1 million, which leaves most of us out of the market, but you never know who's watching. Now, I know this video seems like an advertisement for the classic automobile, but it isn't. Trust me, I know if they pay me, and that's the other thing. It's free to go in there and walk around. Now, it took myself and two friends the better part of three hours to do it, and we were walking at a pretty brisk pace. So, if you happen to be on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, about 30 miles outside of Philadelphia. This place is located right off the Morgantown entrance, and it makes a nice day to walk through and see all the cars. If you're looking to part ways with a vehicle, this might be a good answer for you. It takes away all the stress. You don't even really need to talk to the buyer of your car. You can if you like, but it's not necessary. You also don't have to worry about answering all the messages on Facebook, all the questions you're gonna get, all the spam. I mean, just tons and tons of spam when I listed the Maverick last time. I spent the better part of three days trying to figure out if this is a real message from a real buyer or if it's just BS from some bot down in Africa someplace. Remember, you set the price on this car if you sell it. They can't sell it for you without your okay. If you're not okay with the offer, you don't take it. The car just stays there. I know they move a lot of cars every month. There's 30 or 40 other cars that I video that you're not seeing because they're sold. They're gone. If you're looking to buy a rare or classic car, this is another option for you. You get to look over the entire car. At some point, they can throw in a lift for you so you can see underneath it. I do have a buddy that works down there. His name is Don Humanic. Very low pressure. I actually, I don't think he's going to give you any pressure, but he's very informative. So look up Don if you're down there looking to buy or to sell a car. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. That way other people can see it. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. That immensely helps the channel. Also, if you had an experience at the Classic Auto Mall, either good or bad, let me know. Drop it down in the, the comments below. I have an interest to see exactly what it's like from a customer's perspective. I showed you a couple of Fox Body Mustangs in this video. If you like Fox Body Mustangs, maybe check out this video over here. It goes over all the Fox Bodies from 1979 all the way through 1993. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and until next time, we'll see you.